up? My name is Daniela and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to talk about my favorite books of 2019. Yes, this is horribly late, let's not talk about it. And also, I really need a haircut, but let's not talk about it either, because right now there are things that are way more important than getting a haircut. For some reason, doing this video felt really intimidating and so I put it off and put it off and it was later and later and then I thought, should I still do it? But I still love the books on this list, so it's not outdated or anything, it's just really late. But without further ado, let's jump into the list. Actually, let's look at the stats first. So out of the 10 books, 2 were young adult and 8 were adult. 5 were a contemporary, 2 were a crime mystery or a thriller, and 1 was fantasy, 1 was a historical, and 1 was a non-fiction. So it's a mix of genres just as I like it, and I tried to rank them from the worst <laughs> to the best, but it's very approximate because I find it hard comparing books from different genres. First we have The Sun is also a star by Nicola Yoon, so I don't own this one, I listened to it on audiobook, and yeah, I read it last year during the Owls Readathon and I listened to it during the last 24 hours of the Readathon and yeah, I couldn't put it down literally because I had to read it until the Readathon ended but it was a page turner nonetheless. So this is a young adult contemporary about a girl whose family is about to be deported to Jamaica. So she has the last day in the city and she tries to appeal at the offices so that they could stay and she meets a boy and it's basically about them spending her last day in the States together and so many things happen. They learn quite a lot about each other and it's a wonderful, wonderful romance. I personally don't think it's unrealistic for a teenager to fall in love like during a day. They are kind of opposites of each other so she's really practical and cynical and he's romantic and he writes poems. They get to know each other's families during the day and we also get other people's points of view that they meet during the day. It was entertaining, it was hard hitting and I loved it. Next we have An Anonymous Girl by Greer Hendrix and Sarah Pekanen. Books by this author duo get mixed reviews on booktube but I really love them. I listened to both of them, meaning An Anonymous Girl and The Wife Between Us on audiobook and I think that the audiobooks are really well done. You know, it's a thriller so I want it to be compelling and hard to put down, which this definitely was. So in this book we follow a young woman who is makeup artist and she's broke and she starts to participate in this mysterious study and it's not what she thought it would be. It goes very personal, very quickly, and then she meets the woman behind the research and she starts to have a very weird relationship with her. She's not a therapist, but she starts to manipulate the life of our main character without her realizing it. And it gets pretty dark. To be honest, the plot in these books is not the main thing for me. I mean, I don't even remember how this ends. I feel like their thrillers are kind of hard to explain and you just either click with the style or not. A lot of people don't like them because like they don't think the plot is anything special, but as I said, I love them. Next up we have Daisy Jones and the Six by Till Jenkins Reid and my oh my this book. So previously I loved The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by this author and in this book she did it again. She made me emotional, she made me incredibly invested, she made me marvel about the way she crafts characters and the way she does dynamics between them and also this is set in the 70s and it's about a classic rock band I love classic rock, but I don't necessarily love reading about classic rock bands, like both fiction and non-fiction, because, you know, it's just sex, drugs and rock and roll and like great things happened because, or alongside 
this lifestyle but it's not really fun to read about because these people often did very self-destructing things and it was just a mess so yeah I don't necessarily look for these things and I have to say that the setting was really more of a background it was all about the characters and the dynamics in a band it's a fictional account of how this band got together how they started working with Daisy Jones who is a very interesting character and how they eventually broke up and yeah it's fascinating it's told in the form of an interview and people really rave about the audiobook but i read it physically and i loved it in a physical form and i don't know if i will read it as an audiobook but yeah i really enjoyed the experience of reading this format of a book it was refreshing it was just so fascinating to read about these different people remembering a certain events sometimes they were saying quite different things but that doesn't mean that they were lying their perspectives were just so different and watching that was just yeah fascinating there's also kind of a love triangle it's very dramatic and angsty and it's a little bit like girl what are you doing but it was so fun to read so yeah Dale Jenkins Reid is officially one of my favorite authors now and I want to read her whole backlist next we have Josh and Hazel's guide to not dating by Christina Lauren which I don't own and that is tragic because I would really love to reread it very soon I have read a couple of things by this author duo and I really enjoyed all of it so they are quickly becoming one of my favorite authors this is just such a cute and fluffy romance so this is an opposites attract and friends to lovers romance and yeah these are tropes I tend to enjoy so Hazel is very extroverted she has a vibrant personality she has a lot of pets a lot of stuff and then we have Josh and Josh is very mellow and reserved and they met in college where Hazel basically <laughs> made a fool out of herself and then they meet again I think 10 years later and she's just very determined to become his friend and yeah eventually they fall in love and it's so fun i yeah i loved it i have to say that the ending got a little bit over the top for my taste and there was one trope i really don't like but you know what i'm willing to forgive them for the ending because the book was just so cute so yeah let's just go with it next we have notes on a nervous planet by matt haig which i also don't own because i'm pretty bad at buying books I loved because I always just buy new books that I haven't read but it's definitely one of the books I want to buy because I want to reread it so this is a non-fiction book about mental health it deals specifically with anxiety and social media and this book was so freaking relatable like Matt Haig like he's 40 something dude but I could relate to what he was saying so freaking hard, it was unbelievable. I also read Reasons to Stay Alive by him, which is about depression. And I have these two mixed a little bit in my head, but I believe that Notes on a Nervous Planet was also a little bit of a mixed format. It's partly essays and partly like I think there were tweets from other people who deal with anxiety. So yeah it was so interesting and so nice in a way to read about someone else experiencing the same things even though we are very different people so yeah i definitely want to own that book and just have it so i can read it whenever i want next we have the fletcher by beth o'leary which i also don't own so this is an adult romance an amazing adult romance so we get two perspectives in this book one is from tiffy who needs to escape from an abusive relationship so she's looking for a new apartment quickly so she stumbles upon this at and it basically says that she would be sharing 
a room and even a bed with a guy but the guy works nights and she works days so they would never meet and he has a girlfriend and the girlfriend arranges everything so they actually don't meet for quite a while and yeah Leon is a night nurse and it's kind of a similar situation as Josh and Hazel so they are quite opposites and Leon's chapters are written in this interesting way like I think he wasn't using like pronouns when thinking about what he did so it was like went to the post office so this person there I just made it up but <laughs> you get me so it really added something that described his personality pretty well I think and yeah I really liked him and Tiffy as well and basically they start leaving each other notes and food and they start to form a relationship through these post-its basically. We also learn quite a lot about their work and their personal lives so Tiffy as I said escaped an abusive relationship and unfortunately the ex-boyfriend is still in the picture, he harasses her, she starts therapy and she starts realizing that he was abusive and he was gaslighting her and stuff like that so it was pretty hard hitting during these parts and well Leon's life is not that <laughs> happy either because his brother is in prison for a crime he didn't commit so yeah I really like when romances show us a lot from the personal lives of the couple and it's not just about romance so these people had their lives they had their problems but yeah they start a relationship and it's so freaking cute Beth O'Leary has a new book out called The Switch and I can't wait to read it okay we are getting to the top three and these three books are basically on the same level I would say I rank them somehow but I love all of them so dearly and they are very different so hard to compare but yeah next we have Touch Hard Still Story by Catherine Osby so this is one of my favorite books of all time now. This is a young adult contemporary about a girl named Tash and this was a book that made me feel seen more than any other book I've ever read. So it was a magical experience. So I dubbed it. I don't always tap books, not very often, but I believe that these are all relatable moments. I saw myself in touch in several ways. So first off she's American but she's of a Czech descent. I believe her grandparents were Czech so there were parts about Czech culture and Czech history and that's something I almost never see in English books so that was really nice to see. Next she's also a vegetarian and vegetarian rap or like mentions of people being vegetarian or vegan are usually so poorly done we got the hippie stereotype we get the annoying vegan stereotype we get all of that but not just people not eating animal products but like living their lives normally and it's just mentioned there when it matters like when they talk about food and when she goes somewhere it, it is just mentioned like oh yeah there were these options so I had to like choose from this and I could eat only that so it's like the practical <laughs> aspect of it no moralizing or whatever that's something I also almost never see in books so another thing I loved to see another relatable thing was that she makes YouTube videos so she has her own YouTube channel but the main thing is that she and her friends make a web series that is inspired, it is a modern adaptation of Anna Karenina by Leo Tolstoy. So as a teenager I used to love Tolstoy, I loved Anna Karenina and basically one day their channel blows up because someone gives them a shout out and she gets consumed by all of it, by the comments and the numbers and all of that and that was also very relatable because social media and creating content is great but it's definitely 
it can be a hole that sucks you in you can sometimes lose a touch with reality or become hyper fixated on some things so it was so interesting to see and the main thing that made me feel really seen by this book is that Tash is asexual and the rap in this one was so wonderful Tash has an online crush and she's about to meet him and she's worried that like she doesn't know how to tell him that she's asexual and she doesn't know how he's going to react it's also about her coming out to her friends and not everyone in her life reacts in the best way so yeah i loved so many things about this book and for some people it might not be the most impressive young adult contemporary but for me personally it meant so much and it is so dear to my heart and also the aesthetics of this book i stand the next book in the top three is the final empire by brandon sanderson i've been really intimidated by brandon sanderson and his huge Cosmir and all of the series and like the cover looks like it's going to be dense and hard to understand I don't know but I finally read it I found out that it is not hard to read it is pretty easy to follow in case you don't know this is an adult fantasy and the Dark Lord currently rules over the country the sky is gray and there's like ash falling I might be making it that up I don't remember exactly but it's a very bleak world, very atmospheric and there's this group of thieves basically or like criminals and they have the special powers that only some people in the world have and they have a mission that they are going to overthrow the final empire and it's so epic and yeah I loved the characters, the whole group but especially Kelsier. So yeah, the story was captivating and pretty easy to follow because there was a young girl called Vin who learned about the magic system and world alongside with us. So yeah, we were taught about everything. I can't wait to read the next book in the series, although I really hope something will happen about some of the things that happened near the end because I was not happy about it. And then the last book I'm going to talk about in this video, one of the books I loved the most last year, can you guess it? It's Red, White and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. So this book, oh my god, this book. So as you probably know, this is a new adult romance about the son of a first female American president and a British prince. At the beginning they hate each other and they fall into a cake and then they start developing a relationship and then they don't hate each other anymore. Some scenes were so emotional and too much to handle so I cried, I cried like a baby and I loved every minute of it. So in this book we get a lot of politics and because the relationship is long term for the most part we get a lot of texting and emails which is something i adore in romances so that was definitely a plus some people don't like this very much especially british people because they feel like it's not accurate obviously i wouldn't know i'm neither british nor american so i'm neutral and the way i read it it was just I think it was meant to be taken with a grain of salt and not very seriously and like in some cases I thought that the characters were just joking and not being serious but so yeah I definitely wasn't bothered by these things I didn't take them seriously so it was all about romance for me and the dynamics between Alex and what was his name Henry <laughs> Yeah, I actually really liked Henry. Their friend group and just the fact of being a famous person who is in a forbidden relationship. I loved it. It was amazing. So yeah, that was me. You're probably not very coherently gushing about the books I loved last year the most. Let me know if you've read any of these, what you thought and what was your favorite book of last year or just leave me an emoji because I love getting your comments. So yeah, if you want to follow me on social media, the links are in the description. Like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. But yeah, that is all for today. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!